A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. Max Olasika is my name. This time round, we're going to speak about the state of rugby in the country in the wake of relegation of Kenya National Rugby Sevens team Shuja from HSBC World Seven Series. Remember, they were locking horns against Canada and they lost that particular fixture. And, you know, prior to that fixture, there was, you know, unwavering rallying from... Uh, a million of Kenyans led by, you know, Cabinet Secretary Zababu Namwamba and Eli Dowalo releasing a video clip saying how they are supporting Shuja to win against, you know, Canada so that to remain in HSBC World 7 Series, something that failed to materialize. And of course, we're delving into that particular conversation with one person who has been a noisemaker on social media platforms and is rallying behind uh, Cabras Rugby Football Club in the local Kenya Cup scene, Jerimai. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good. Rugby, what inspires you to, you know, push for all this? Because um, I love supporting the boys. Um, I've, I've actually been to the legs in Vegas when I was in the US. So we would go there. We had a hashtag. I think it originated in Kenya. Hashtag Jaza Study. So we would hashtag Jaza Study and we go cheer the boys there. So it's been a continuous thing, but my support in Lianza Kwanda Rugby when I wasn't even 18 years old, so. And you've <laughs> never thought of, at your tender age, you never thought of, you know, probably featuring for Kenya Lionesses or something? No. Just love for the sport? Yes. Wow, that's nice, Ken, right? I think it is really nice because, you know, the first thing, you know, for you to be a fan is you have to identify your sport at a very young age, you know, because I don't think you can really delve in and love a sport when you're 30. You know, you really have to start when you're really young so that you get to understand the rules and all the dynamics. So, you know, 16, 17, you know, find something to do, a sport, and just love it for your whole life. So having been in the United States, did you get an opportunity to meet uh, our guy? Is it Mike Friday or Paul True? Mike Friday, yeah. I met him... Um, Almost all the legs I attended, 17, 18, 19, I met him and I met the boys, uh, the Eagles. I met them there in the hotel. How does it feel, you know, having lost him to United States, considering <laughs> the love he enjoyed from Kenyans? Does he miss Kenya? <laughs> he does. And actually, he even communicates with Kenyans on social media. Yeah, I see. Yes. I, I normally see his tweets. So he still loves Kenya and that's why we still call him Otoyo up to date. His name has never changed. Now let's speak about what happened in the midweek regarding our relegation from HSBC World 7 Series. Kenya National Rugby 7 team should have did their best. They gave their all, but you know, was it luck or we didn't prepare or it was time, it was ripe for <laughs> our relegation? Well, personally, myself, I'll admit, and few friends of mine, we were like, let's just get relegated because to Napushi Kitu in Akata. We were, it has been in the pipeline all along for us to get relegated. If you remember during uh, Murunga Zera, 2018-19, yes. we almost got relegated. And then we pushed hard, we fought for it. I remember even one of the players in Vegas, Ali Cheza, a Kiwana injury. Like you see these guys really struggling. And here we are, now we are relegated. So the next thing is now we have to play next year for see if we're going to get back to the HSBC, Ama, this is it. Can we use this opportunity <laughs> to put our house in order so that <laughs> we make a stylish comeback? Uh, I think series. it's two ways. Yes, you can. But I think it will be very, very hard to find other competitors who are fighting to go back into HSBC with you. I think that will be harder than going for something in the, in the HSBC 7s. But also I think uh, you can put your house in order when you are still in the top league. I think that would have been best for Kenya because, you know, you have to think of what the Sevens has meant to Kenyans personally over the past 10, 15 years. You know, year in, year out, you see Kenya in Vegas, Kenya, you know, all over the world, you know, you see your flag there. But now, you know, you move to a league which is not that documented as compared to the HSBC. So a lot of things will come from that. And I think uh, when it comes to putting your house in order, in terms of finances also, you know, that, that will be a key area because, you know, I think uh, the remuneration will be different from what they usually get. So it is a chance to do it, but they'll have to fight, fight, fight a lot for it to happen. You know, the guys who feature for Kenya National Rugby 7's team are 
fantastic professionals, you know, yeah. people who give their all, you know, excellent patriots. And uh, I occasionally meet Billy Odiambo, but I haven't met him lately. He's one of the experienced players, a guy who has uh, dedicated his, you know, commitment playing for Kenya and ensuring that, you know, glory uh, gets to be brought back home. But I'm pretty sure you are in constant touch with some of these players. What is the feel like, their mood, you know, considering, you know, the relegation, you know, having played at the big stage in uh, HSBC World 7 Series at top level, you know, yeah. but now suddenly you <laughs> <laughs> we are back to come zero. into the lower tiers. Well, I feel bad for the boys. The fact that uh, we have the young blood, the likes of Abukuse, Wang, uh, Wekesa, Tanga, Anya, King George, that is Oro. Those are like some young people who are trying to get there and be like the next Billy and be like the next uh, Kolo. But now what have we done to them? We are there, we can't help them. I can't blame the players because they don't select themselves. But the whole Siasa politics at KRU that is pushing even the coaches to recycle players is what the issue, like, that should be the huge issue the KRU should be focusing on. Yes, we've failed. we failed to support the boys. We failed to support the coach, and now here we are. What next? Because if I carry you right now, we have a game next year in April, right? To try and see if we are going back to HSBC. I would start training right now. Get 26 players, train them, pole pole. We get the best facilities. That way, come next year, we get in. Also, we have an invitation coming up in New York, I think next month, if I'm not wrong. That's a, ch a chance for the boys to shine. Because they are winning money. Go in, get the money, and then just have an agreement with Gary. Hey, if we play, we win. This money, I think you'll just get 5%. The rest is ours. So sufficient <laughs> preparations are key. Yeah. And you've mentioned about recycling of players. I've seen the squad has been, you know, gel of experience and uh, new blood. Yes. Did it work for the betterment and success of the team? Kinda, kinda not. Because... Any coach should have a team A. If mm -hmm. you don't have a team A, then what are you doing? Like you say, this is my team in, in Nigeria. We are playing Canada and we have to fight these guys. Team A in Nigeria. Substitute Pole Pole. What did we do? We didn't do that. We put in Waze, <laughs> which is a Bonda rugby. <laughs> we can't be playing Bonda rugby in, when we are get, getting relegated. You play such rugby when you have 100 plus points. You see? You can risk it. You're like, ah, you have like few hours to come before you get relegated. Now, mm -mm. Ken, are you, are, you, are you in agreement? Because we've had, you know, high profile players before they have retired, Colin Sinjera, one of the all time try scorers, you know, because the Mandro Amonde, the captain, mm -hmm. uh, and the guy who has played in professional French football, he did a wedding recently. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Nani, William Baka. William Baka, oh, oh, the man himself, a uh, very fantastic professional who has also phenomenally featured for Kenya National Rugby Sevens team. And you know, we have had several players who have exited the scene. But now, can we blame it on transition? We delayed putting in place mechanisms that uh, could have helped in proper transition. I think uh, what you said, the delay in mechanisms, I think. Uh, that's one thing that should really be looked at because these mechanisms are, are just not identifying the players and getting them shoot in. You know, as she has said, you know, get you know, you know when the tournament is said to be train these players, have a look at them for ample time, rather than you know lack and and the, the season starts and that's when you you're, you're learning your players because I feel like that is also something that may have been happening. Uh, you know, the coach came in into the job like almost halfway. Some players does the whole COVID thing. And then now you have to learn the players as each leg comes and, you know, it doesn't give you the full view of what exactly you're handling. Even if you try to mix the youth and experience, you know, there, there, there will still be a gap. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that has really, really hurt uh, the Kenyan uh, rugby. And uh, also you, you look at uh, the simple mistakes I feel like they've been making. There are some really easy mistakes that, you know, consistent training and, you know, a coach who can really push it on them, you know, things could have not gone south for Kenya. So for mechanisms, I think they have to look way ahead of what's going to come and, you know, start really, really early because these players are good players, 
but getting them into a team and mixing them up that's where the problem starts for for KRU and also for for Kenyan rugby in general yeah you've mentioned about politics at Kenya rugby you know right now as you speak you have new officials at the helm of the federation after election Sasha Mutai a quantity survey and our good friend with you know passion for rugby now is at the helm as the president having replaced you know Gangla who decided not to defend his seat and we have you know a board of directors who, uh, including Humphrey Kayanga a man who has also featured prominently for Kenyan rugby and now in charge of you know squad development I don't know what <laughs> whom do we blame when you say <laughs> politics at Kenya rugby uh, we blame everyone. Everyone thinks because if you are the chairman, you have to sit down with your directors and say this is what I have for the next two years or the next three months or the next six months, right? Like 15th, who are we to blame? Gangi wasn't there when 15th, the Curry Cup was being planned. So we can't blame him for that. Oh, we've pulled out of Curry Cup, right? We can't. We, the game was today. We didn't go. Apparently, we don't have fans. So Chipu, <laughs> we failed to win Bats Cup that happened at Nyayo. Uh, yes. Kenya 15s, also known as Simbas, mm -hmm. withdrew out mm -hmm. of Curry Cup. Lioness. Shuja, <laughs> Ikoinje, HSBC. Lioness? Lioness, we go for invitation. Whenever you get invitation, we go. Right now we are playing somewhere in Madagascar. That's why I think Sasha is. We had a game for Kenya in SA Juzi and we lost. Oh, Ile Tulichapo, I think. For on, Wednesday, on Wednesday. It was a proper thrashing. Yeah. So literally, rugby is just dying, dying. We have a game coming up in July, right? For Chipo. What are we doing? Are they even training? They should be in a camp right now. So it's quite devastating as far as matters rugby in the country is concerned. What do we do? <laughs> to get back to, you know, where we were to restore the lost glory. Maybe they need to sit down with Mwangimo there and the likes of Kinakadi and Ogutu and ask them, what did you do then that we are not doing now for us to get where you guys were that we are not now? But I think most of the people you have at some point, they have worked with Mwangimo there. Sasha, at some point, worked with Mwangimo there. Yes, correct. So they understand <laughs> what is supposed to be done. And can we say it is too early to blame the current leadership because they have just got into the office the other day? It's never too early to blame anyone and it's never too late to blame anyone. Because the minute you get the hand of a file, you know this is what I'm expected to do in the next one, two, three weeks and this is what I should be trying to get. Because it, it sucks. Like, it hurts right now as you think of 15s. They didn't play today. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to host the games here in Kenya. Apparently we didn't have money to host. We don't have money to take the players out there. Then what do we have? And Ken, you know, as a, a player, you get to feel demotivated when such a thing happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, something she said, she was talking about Chipu. They have a game in July. Yeah, we have a game in Nyayo. Yeah, and they're not training. And I think a couple of weeks when the bats were starting, we had the same complaint here about... From the coach, right? Yeah, that them, is... yeah them not being in camp. And, you know, when you say a new leadership has stepped in, I think something like that they saw but they're still not acting on it in a different situation. So, you know, they need to recheck and, you know, see what priorities are there. For the players themselves, especially the young ones right now, you know, they, they are asking the same questions maybe we are asking, you know, what are we doing till then? And that greatly demotivates you because it, it shows you to some extent that you're not in someone's plans because they are not funding you, they're not calling you into camps, they're not preparing you mentally. So, you know, that, that really kills off the motivation because I feel like... Um, for a good foundation, we need to take care, especially of Chipu here, because, you know, they, they will carry the flag for more years than, you know, the more established players. So for player motivation, you know, they themselves, Chipu, see the, the, the major teams do, having pay bills and all, you know, they just ask themselves, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Because as, as things stand, you know, it's a really, really risky place to be where there's no fans, there are no games you're playing. It's really risky for the players' motivation. And when KRU says that, you know, financial problem is the main challenge, which we probably resonate well with them and read from the same script with them. And uh, just earlier on, we were talking about, um, you know, corporate confidence in Kenyan sporting uh, activities and stakeholders and how, you know, 
in other disciplines like golf and rally, they have been attracting and weathering sponsorships from you know local corporates led by the likes of Safaricom, KCB. What do we do to also translate the same into rugby? Considering how rugby does as proud, you know, just wearing that jersey on the international platform and raising the Kenyan flag and winning Singapore Sevens in 2016 under uh Aimba. the trailage of our good late friend benjamin aimba mm -hmm. you know it is such a huge thing playing vancouver sevens playing los angeles sevens yeah. you know that's advertising kenya and putting it on the roadmap as far as international uh, scene is concerned i think the main issue is people see when fans are complaining i won't lie to you yeah. some fans have big people or rather ex even ex sponsors following them mm -hmm. so the minute you start complaining about mismanagement of funds in KRU, you mm -hmm. think there's any sponsor who want to touch them no mm -hmm. one they'll all back off because mm -hmm. if i give you a million today then the next day i'm seeing players complaining we haven't had our allowance we haven't had our pay these players need to eat they need to pay their bills they have maybe families to take care of and they cannot afford but every day they are representing us as kenyans not even KRU. Kenyans, the whole country. So people tend to get scared and run away. Yes. Because I would too. When I want to say I go safe. Yeah. I would too. And nowadays, when someone investing, they need to get value for their for their money. For their money. Yes. So value for this money is negative. It's <laughs> negative, and in this case, it should be you know proper packaging, proper branding. Mm -hmm. You know how how they will reap from uh, that investment and whatever they will get in return. Max, ask yourself, when Mwangi Mude and Kinakadieda were in the, uh, in the leadership back in the day, we had Safaricom, we had Kenya Airways. Qatar was going to come in, if you remember so well. What happened? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Mismanagement of funds after Mwangi Mude left. We started with pay bills. M Changa, go fund me. Players can't pay bills. Let's Changa for them. Even sponsors are feeling bad. They're like, well, why are we paying the money if at the end of the day these players have to go beg funds for money? And I, I happened to serve with Mangi Mude in FKF caretaker committee, and we used to meet regularly along the corridors at Nyan National Stadium, and I could ask him, hey, chairman, Mr. Chairman, now that you know our rugby is doing the way it's doing, are you planning probably to make a comeback? But you know he was very categorical that he's ready for for consultancy. He can advise where appropriately. Whenever he gets reached upon, he wouldn't you know uh, be reluctant to give his pro bono advice on how to run the game. And probably maybe the current leaders can reach out to him, and he would not be reluctant to share his insights on how the game can be managed but you know there is that time and there is this time and you know things are getting <laughs> dynamical maybe that was that time and this is the time where new leaders need to cope yeah. how you know sport is evolving okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 and i totally agree with that because you know times also change in terms of leadership and trends especially when you look at where we are living right now tough economic situations, you know, it requires one to be more sharp than those who are here before. You can console those who are here before, but you understand the situation now is different. If you're coming into this role, you expect hardship. And, you know, I think that is something this KRU under Sasha may have expected, but, you know, in early stages, the early days, they have failed to deal with it. Because I think uh, when you are running for something, when you want to become something, you have plans and you have, you can see the foreseeable future. We went past the national elections. You knew that there was a deep, you know, hole coming in terms of, of uh, the economic times. But still, you know, we see the same, same things happening that have been happening for a couple of years now. Uh, you know, I think we need the leadership to, re to, to really, really recheck what they, their mandate because uh, as it stands now, you know, I don't see anything different coming up soon. There's, there's, there's no indication that there'll be a, an immediate sponsor, there'll be a big change, you know. I just feel like it will continue because that, that's the situation across multiple sports in this country. 
Yeah. You mean Kenyans are getting pessimistic about the state of our sports in the country? Yes, it's that bad. Mm -hmm. It's that bad. What is that attributed to? Why? Why the change of tune? <laughs> <laughs> because you can feel like when everything is going down the slope. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are right now. Yeah. Nothing seems to work. All the, let's call them four, Chipu, Lioness, 15, Kenya 7s, where are they? Nothing is working out at all. How about our league? <laughs> the state of our league? <laughs> it's bad. Because it should be an integral form of the breakthrough we're supposed to witness at the national level. When our league is quality, mm -hmm. then we need to witness quality at the national level in terms of Shujan Simbas. Uh, maybe it's, as Nick has said, it might take years. It might take years. Because tell me, those people who faced relegation, the young players, do you really think right now they have the psych to go back again? They don't have the motivation. So without motivation, that's where we'll have the hiccups. Watch and see. So many players will retire right now. And you know, considering, you know, there's this stereotype that most of the rugby players are serious professionals, you know, having studied at the university as a lawyer, as a, you know, a quantity surveyor, as an engineer, as, you know. What you are trying to insinuate is that, you know, most of these players will quit rugby as a sport and now concentrate on their careers. Exactly. Which they did at the college and university level. Exactly. Because if rugby is not paying or helping them pay their bills, why would they be there? Yet they know their employment, they'll get the money and they'll pay their bills without struggle. Without having to balance to wake up at you. You're waking up at five for you to get up to training, go train, go to work, or even some good training in the afternoon. You don't even have family time. The game that is denying you ample family time is the same game that's not paying you well. School games, it is supposed to be the bedrock of, you know, our rugby. As massive investment been put in our school games because Anderson, like any you at Upper Hill, you've said how you you were in Form 3 with Johnston Olindi, yeah, who is yeah. now a serious player at the Kenya Rugby 7s team level. And uh, has there been, you know, much priority and uh, you know concentration being uh, considered for school games which churn a lot of talents to the yeah, national sides i think uh, there was there was hype around uh, butula when when they did what they did there was really big hype but you know we haven't seen how you know these kids are going to be pushed into the the setup you know but i think uh, the advantage uh, in this time that we have is uh, I think a lot of university sides are really up for it. They're really up for rugby. I see a lot of them in the championship, some in the Kenya Cup. And I think uh, if they can do the job for KRU and get these kids into scholarships, into their teams, I think that will be a huge advantage because, you know, uh, for them also to have rugby and a career, I think uh, college or university education is important so that if one doesn't go, the other carries you. So I think uh, the, the, the recent growth of university sides wanting to compete more, wanting to be in the Kenya Cup, you know, investments from their school's uh, sporting department. I think that's one thing we can re really look at. But, you know, it will always be down to KRU, you know, how they set up the training camps, even even clinics for, for these kids when they're, you know, half time or something, you know. It's always down to them to have these concrete things to, to transition these kids into, you know, professionals, you know really really like get them from butula and you know switch them to people who from can koyonzo my yes. neighbor you know when you throw a stone <laughs> from uh, shards yeah. <laughs> yes. secondary. Yes. and you know they conquered at rugby yeah. during school games last year at 15th yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. they even represented the country in east africa yes, east africa. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, no much structures have been put in place to ensure that there is continuity so that, you mm -hmm. know, players we get to witness at the school level yeah. are feeder programs to the national sites. Yeah. Anyway, it's been an insightful conversation indeed. Jerry, thank you for coming through. Probably your uh, uh, last sentiments before we conclude. Um, all I would say is 
we should not blame the players. And personally, as a fan, I'm proud of you of what you did out there. But it's time to regroup, rethink. We do a whole cleanup in KRU. <laughs> Whoever is not working, just step out and we bring in new people. We have a good coach who is a coach, assistant Damien coach. Damien McGrath? No. The assistant coach, Kenya Sevens. Oh. Wambua. Larry Wambua. Kevin Wambua. Kevin Wambua. Oh, Larry yes. Wambua is the dad. Former yes. dad KBC. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Kevin Wambua should take over the Kenya Sevens and just, he should start training them right now and just proceed as a coach. You know, Beatrice, the, allow me to ask some last question. You know these people who are widely traveled like yourself, you said you've been in the United States, but there is this concern. And they never do benchmarking so that when they come back home, something they learned, uh -huh. they can suggest it to be incorporated into our system. When you are at the US, what did you learn that, you know, probably if it gets to be proposed back home, like we incorporated, it has idea of growth of our game. Have you attempted to reach out to KRU and probably su give suggestions? If I did, they would block me. So. <laughs> 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 you just, you just make, I just make noise on my Twitter, whoever reads, reads, or my Facebook, whoever reads, reads, and if they won't have it, they can go sit down and discuss as coaches and take over there. But it sucks to see that rugby, if an instance, Aimba woke up today, I think he would just be like, hey, I want to die again. Because this is not where he left rugby. And this is not what he dreamt of rugby ever coming to an end. Because this is not the best way to ever see the game die. And we hope we will bounce back next year, April. We just hope so. Yeah. We hope we will bounce back next year, April. That is a proper, you know, uh, finishing line as we... Uh, do conclusion of this particular segment as far as discussion and insightful conversation it's been on the state of rugby in the country in the wake of you know relegation of Kenya Rugby 7's team Shuja from HSBC World 7 Series remember we were playing against Canada on Sunday but bad day in the office we got defeated and therefore we will have to come back to the lower tiers as you know we try to put our house in order and uh, probably make a stylish comeback Next year, it's been a pleasure doing this. Jerry, my thank you for coming through. Ken Andrew, of course, is still with us. Don't go away. Stay tuned. The conversation still continues. Touchline Y254 is the hashtag at Wasike Maxwell. Ken, what's your Twitter handle? At Ken Muganda. And your Twitter handle, the one you make noise on? At Twitter, Jerry, but the, uh, there's an underscore between J and R. Yeah. So we continue, uh, you know, talking about state of rugby even after the conclusion of the segment on this particular platform. Don't go and stay tuned. We're coming up with international football review ahead of Champions League finale pitting City up against International Inter Milan. Don't go away.